about uh, Ayodhya and the remains of a temple below the, the mosque, but, controversial okay. mosque. I was in an excavation team led by Professor B. B. Lal. He was, he's a doyen of uh, Indian archaeologists and has carried out excavations in various parts of the world. So it was in 1976-77 he had gone to uh, Ayodhya, excavated just behind the mosque. At that time it was not a controversial issue and I was the only Muslim who had participated in that excavation. All others were Hindus. We were from the school of archaeology. And during the, before the excavation, excavation has got two parts. One is the excavation proper and the second is exploration around the surrounding areas. So that during the exploration we went all around and we went to the controversial mosque also. So inside the mosque there were 12 pillars which were temple pillars. So normally the question comes, you know, in your mind also, how do you distinguish temple pillars from mosque pillars? Everything, because whether it is a mosque, whether it is a church, whether it is a temple, they have got certain features on the basis of which you can identify whether it is a temple, whether it is a mosque, or it's a church. So in 11th and 12th century temples, you have that Purna Kalasha. What is a Purna Kalasha? Purna Kalasha is a symbol of prosperity in Hinduism. It's known as one of the Ashta Mangala Chinnas, that is eight auspicious symbols. Even now, if a great Acharya of Hinduism comes, you are not going to receive him by garlanding. Mm -hmm. Not by giving a, I mean, this one, um, uh, okay. mm -hmm. but it would be with a Purna, Purna Kalasha. So this Purna Kalasha was engraved on the temple parts. And if you have an, then inside there were certain, this one also, certain idols also inside the mosque. So if you have any doubt, go to Kutub Minar. Just by the side of Kutub Minar, that is in Delhi, there is a mosque known as Kuvatul Islam Masjid. Mm -hmm. That was made out of the spoils of 27 temples. Mm -hmm. Even now you can see more than 50 idols in those monuments, in that uh, mosque. So certain, certain wrongs have already happened in Indian mm -hmm. history. There is no point in concealing them, in hiding mm -hmm. them. Whatever has happened, happened. Let us accept those things. But let us also accept the fact that the present day Muslims are not responsible for those things. That was an Afghani group of Muslims who had come, they had demolished our temples. But then I add that the present day Muslim would be responsible the moment they try to justify it. Because you know, that is what is happening now, they are trying to justify it. Any, and for that, the communist historians led by Irfan mm -hmm. Habib and many other people, even from JNU, they are also supporting this extreme Muslim group of people. We are neither, I am, basically I am neither with the, with the extreme Hindus, nor with the extreme Muslims. I don't go with those Hindus who say that we had Pushpaka Vimana in those days. I don't go with those people, I mean we knew surgery in those days. I don't go with those people, we had internet system, I mean, with, I mean from the, uh, this cow you can get gold and all those things. These are even unnecessary, irrational, unreasonable argument. We don't go. As an archaeologist, I go in search of truth. So that truth, you know, here I mean we could, we could see that one. And in 1976 and 77, this was not an important issue at that time. But the left historians came forward, they gave a press statement that Professor uh, Lal had excavated the place. He could not get any temple remains at all, because he had got a number of uh, temple remains. But he had not highlighted it at that time, because it was a different mm -hmm. period. So Professor Lal had to defend himself, saying that, no, we had got several temple remains, but of course we had not highlighted it because we don't want to create an issue out of it. Mm -hmm. Since you have created an issue out of it, now I have to defend. So, so uh, it looks like the neither the Hindus nor the Muslims had any issue, like there was no issue yes, created. There was no, but yeah. there was this third party, Ibarra Jagada Dali Murnaya Onege Laba So yes. you have called it the Aligarh School of Communism. So yes. can you elaborate yes. on what was this benefit that they were deriving from not letting the truth be told? See, if both Hindus and Muslims comes together, you know, that is the biggest problem for them. Then you would not be able to divide the country. So that is the biggest benefit they are accruing out of it. And then in, 1970, in 1990, because when Professor B. B. had to defend himself, I was working in Madras at that mm -hmm. time, it is Chennai now, Madras. I was the deputy superintending archaeologist of Archaeological Survey of India. I gave a statement, no, because we had got, I mean, we had been, been able to expose a number of, number of temple remains. And I was the only Muslim mm -hmm. who had participated in that excavation. And even otherwise also, I said, that is only the archaeological and historical evidence. And the second thing is, it is as important for Hindus as Makkah and Medina mm -hmm. are for Muslims. And for Muslims, for Muslims, it is not very important. Because, you know, it is for them, it is simply a mosque. It is neither associated with Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad, because you know, had it been associated with Prophet Muhammad, I too would have stood along with those people. 
in islam after prophet muhammad the most important people are four caliphs of islam mm. that is hazrat abu bakr hazrat umar hazrat usman hazrat ali radhiyallahu these are the four most important had it been associated with them also we too should have we would have stood with them and it's neither associated with any of this great awliyas of like mm. ajmer sharif khaja mohinuddin chishti or nizamuddin awliya also i mean had it been with those people then then again we had a stand for them we would have stood for them for them this is a, simply a mosque but for shri rama or shri ghatna you cannot change the sport but for muslim could change the sport so they should have it was a very great opportunity for the muslim community to realize the importance of the issue and then willingly hand it over to hindus for creating a for constructing a huge temple and the muslims also should have willingly contributed for that one so that great opportunity Muslim. muslim missed it because of the persuasive attitude of the communist student a section of the communist student because i won't hold responsible the whole gamut of uh, this one uh, uh, communist student. but a section of led by jnu and aligarh university so if you can uh, i mean this journey has also been one from a madrasa to discovering yeah, ram yeah, mandir yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you can you help us tell like in the times where today uh, purists do not want any indianization of islam yeah. so can you talk about for, for your journey you are as much indian as much now you're saying that islam is as important as me being indian so okay. how how do you deal with that see because you know i too had my basic i mean this one uh, studies in in a madrasa so in madrasa system you have because you know, and especially in the semitic religion semitic religion means judaism yeah. christianity islam. and islam i mean the truth is only one i mean if you are uh, if you are not a muslim and uh, then you will not be going to jannat jannat means heaven if you are not a christian you will not be going to heaven again if you are not a jew then you will not be going that is i mean how semitic religion think of their religion and their future also but in hinduism you believe in god and you don't believe in god you be, uh, worship shiva or you worship uh, vishnu i mean you don't have you don't go to the temple so even then you are a hindu so this is a, one of the greatly tolerant religion so this is the need of the hour also this is the need of the hour also for a modern world you know you need a religion like hinduism for example i can tell you i often whenever i get an opportunity to speak to some of the extreme religious group of muslim community i tell them one thing i remind them one thing that even after giving a separate country like pakistan okay. to muslims if india is secular it's only because it is hindu, hindu. majority country had it been a muslim majority country <laughs> it would never have been a secular country so this is the greatness of hinduism which we should realize uh, you also in that same line have mentioned that how it is how an indian muslim is not a complete indian muslim if he doesn't see rama and krishna as part of his yes, cultural yes, yes, yes. so so we have to take clues for all these things you know if rama and krishna if they are not your national i mean your itihasa purushas then you are not a perfect muslim you go to many other countries for example malaysia is an example indonesia is an example, example. for them all this rama krishna although they are I mean, rama and krishna are not from their country for them they are heroes the heroes national heroes for indonesia for ayodhya i mean this one for thailand for all these countries they are heroes for example persia rustam and sohara that is part of their heritage they are not muslims but persian muslims they have adopted them as national heroes so similarly indian muslims also should have adopted rama krishna and all these people and all our mythological figures as our own national heroes yeah. so there also muslims have somehow muslim have, have failed to i mean realize the importance of the issue so when you're making statement like this i'm sure you had the left has anyway taken you on but you also had uh, a lot of difference of opinion that is not so uh, easy to deal with from your own community how has that struggle been or how have you dealt with that see since i'm coming from muslim community is not as tolerant as hindu community so there will be always oppositions there will be problem there will be i mean threatening calls would be there so i had to face all these things because you know i fought started this uh, this issue or speaking on this issue right from 197 i mean I excavated in 1976 77 but in 1990 i came out in the press that was in indian express in indian express on 15th of december mm-hmm. 1990 my statement came, okay. came out so at that time i was a government servant so naturally being a government servant i am not supposed to speak because you know it is against my own conduct rules i should not have spoken the government could have suspended me and uh, at that time it was not a bjp government also it was chandrashekhar ji's government then it was narasimha rao's government so then there was a move also to suspend me so my secretary said that he is going to suspend me right now at that time he said i am going to suspend you right now so i told him sir this is because you know, i don't want to gain anything out of it i just wanted to state a fact and then i said log samgraha me vapi sambhashyan kartum arhasi whatever i have done i have done for the welfare for the betterment of the people 
So the secretary was from Allahabad. So, and he was, uh, Dr. Tripathi, he said, I'm a Brahmin from uh, Allahabad. You are teaching me Sanskrit. I'm going to suspend you right now. He repeated the word. So, I said again, sir, you can suspend me. And uh, I had an, it's a, of course, it's a, it was a mistake for me. I admit it. But had I sought permission from the government of India, it they would never have given me. So, I have stated this fact. And then I said that, uh, I mean, even death is also welcome for stating a truth. So, that, when I recited that one, this one uh, that uh, uh, I'm just not able to recall the sentence which I, when I stated this you one. You said Swadharme Nidhanam Shreya. Yes, Swadharme. Yes, Swadharme Nidhanam, nidhanam Shreya. Shreya. So, that, that is also welcome for I mean, if, if performing my own duties. When I recited this mantra, he said, well, Mr. Muhammad, we all knew the truth. But we had some problems were there and departmental problems were there. It should have been spoken by an archaeologist. You are an archaeologist. It's good that you have spoken. It should have been spoken by a Muslim and you are a Muslim and you have done it very well. But at the same time, I am under you know, instruction from the government of India that I should take action against mm -hmm. you. Then there was, I, Mahadevan was there. Mm. He was the, I mean, a great archaeologist okay. also. He was a very great, I mean, a, a IAS officer also. He was the editor of that Dinamalar in, in uh, Dinamani, yeah. I think Dinamani in Tamil. So he intervened and then my suspension that was converted into a transfer from Tamil Nadu circle, that is from Madras to Goa. Mm. So that was my, this one, I mean, that way, I mean, they saved me. Mm. So that was the first excavation. And the second, at that time, he had said, some group of people say that there are no temple remains. Mm. Others say there are no temple temples. remains. Then why can't we do a third excavation and see the whole thing? So that excavation was carried out in 2003 2000. under Dr. B.R. Mani. Dr. Mm. B.R. Mani and Dr. Harimanji. I was not there in that excavation. And that was being used against you, like whenever the waiter said, he's yes. never part of the excavation. Yes, 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 yes. I was not part of the second excavation. I was part of the first, first excavation. Yes. Since I had already come out my own opinion on the basis of the first excavation, there was no point in including me in the second excavation. That was uh, this one uh, under the leadership of Dr. B.R. Mani. So in that excavation, earlier we had got 12 temple pillars. Okay. But now, during, first of all, I mean, this communist historian said, no, this mosque has been built over virgin land. Okay. Virgin land means, I mean, below that, there was no construction at all, no temple, nothing, nothing, not even uh, with, uh, civil constructions also. It was built over virgin land. Then the radar survey was conducted. And that story was sold for quite some time. Yes, to yes, 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 yes. That GPR survey, ground penetrating radar survey was conducted. So in which, you know, certain anomalies were I mean, detected. Then when it was further excavated, then we had got 12 temple pillars, but pillars. it was more than 50 pillars in 17 rows stating that this was a huge temple yeah. of that period, the 12th century. So that was one thing. And the second thing was that pranala. Yeah. Pranala means I mean, every day if it is Shiva temple, Vishnu temple, you have to bathe it. And that Abhishek Jala goes through to, pranala. Yeah. It is known as Makara pranala. Makara means a crocodile. Yeah. So crocodile is a symbol of river Ganga. So if you go to North India, in front of Garbhagraha, there will be on the right side, there will be a lady standing on Makara, that is crocodile. There will be another lady on the left side standing on tortoise, which means that is Ganga and Yamuna. So you are having a symbolic bath in Ganga, Yamuna and the underground Saraswati. And then after purifying yourself, you are going to Garbhagraha. So that is the concept. So this Magara Pranala was excavated from there. Had it been a Muslim, only exclusively a Muslim thing, then there would not have been this Magara Pranala. Then 263 idols were excavated. Oh. That is, terracotta idols were excavated. So in which, I mean, uh, Varaha was there. Varaha, we all know that it yes. is, uh, I mean, Malsi Kurma Varas, Yenara Singhi Vamanati De Ramo Ramas. So Varaha is one of the avadaras. Then Cobra was there. Then many animals were there. Then human figures were there. Lady figures were there. Drum was, uh, lady was there. A number of these things, you know. So none of them would have been, uh, could have been excavated from a mosque. mosque. It is only from there. And then the most important thing was, then this one, that is Amalka of the temple. Amalka means in North Indian temples, you will be always having, like I hold a Patadakal mm -hmm. and all this place, place, you will be having just below Kalasha, you will be having yeah, yeah. the Amalka. Yeah. Then the most, again, the most important thing was that uh, this one, Vishnu Hari Shila Falak. It's an inscription of 20 lines in which it says that this temple is dedicated to that uh, this, uh, uh, avatara who has killed Bali. So who has killed Bali? Rama. Then again, it says who has killed 10 headed person. Who is ten headed person? Ravana. Ravana. So I mean it is very clear. So it was on the basis of which archaeological survey in the second excavation said that there was a huge temple of this one dedicated to Vishnu. I mean after the I mean before the 
the, the, I mean, below the mosque. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, whatever, I mean, this one, whatever report has been submitted by Archaeological Survey of India, that was fully acknowledged and accepted by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. And the judgment is on the basis of this particular excavation, which was conducted both by Dr. Mani and Dr. Bilal.